And the hypocrites would walk away from Islam in two ways. And this is important. One is obviously leaving Islam altogether, ridda. Outright, you become Muslim and everybody knows you're no longer Muslim. You become a kafir again. But there's another form of turning away from deen. And that is that on the outside, you say that you still profess to be from the Muslims because that has social consequences if you walk away from Islam outright. And that has social consequences, but for all practical purposes, and on the inside, there's nothing left. There's really nothing left. And when especially now you've become a person of picking and choosing what do you take from the deen and what you don't take from the deen. And this is one of the central messages of this surah. That you don't have, you're not in a position to negotiate what it is from this deen that you accept and what it is from this deen that you don't accept. Or that you don't find comfortable so you're not, you know, you're not going to necessarily take it. This is one of the central ideas communicated in this deen. Just recently, actually yesterday over the internet, I was talking to a youth group in DC. And, you know, a question came up in the discussion. There was this, you know, young sister who asked the question, I love everything about Islam except hijab. And it seems like hijab is there to protect men from looking at us. So, you know, I don't really see the point in it. And instead of arguing of the social benefits of hijab or what hijab does to honor women and all of that stuff, that's actually already going in the wrong direction, that conversation. We need to take a step back and ask a more fundamental question. Let's take a step back and let's, let's ask Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam loves Islam too. But then Allah makes a little tiny little request. How about you go in the middle of the desert and leave your family there? Right? He's not one that's gonna say, I love everything about Islam, but this whole leaving my family in the middle to die thing, I don't know. I'm not that comfortable with that. And after he's done with that, you know what? Why don't you jump into a fire? You know, I love everything about Islam, except this whole you know, burning myself alive, that's asking a little too much. Nope, you don't find that question. Then Allah says, put a knife to your son's throat. Go ahead. And he says, you know, I love Islam, but I also love my son. I don't know, is there, can you give me a logical explanation for why I should do this? Can you tell me the social benefits or some of the other reasons, other benefits that why I should be obeying you? If قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ There's a reason Allah taught us that lesson in Surah Al-Baqarah. Whenever Allah said to him, give yourself up, submit, surrender, he said, I surrender, I give myself up, I submit myself entirely before the master of all peoples. So before we talk about any aspect of deen and try to figure out the logic of it, understand the larger purpose. Allah has made this deen one of submitting to him. If you're having a hard time submitting to him, you're having a hard time with Islam itself, the very central idea of deen itself. It's not to say you shouldn't understand the ahkam of Allah, but you have to, you and I have to be ones that once we understand them, we have to, whether we get it or not, whether we see the logic of it or not, we have to give it up. We have to just give it up. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. Of course, the ayah is addressing us. Man yartadda minkum an The one who turns back away, turns away among you, minkum, an from his deen. The one who turns back from among you, from his deen. Allah didn't say all of us are turning back to, from, from our deen, a group from among us. And man is an interesting word in Arabic, it could refer to something plural, and it can also refer to something singular. So in a, from a point of view of taqleel, it could be even if a single person is walking away from deen. They're walking away from the religion. And I've already mentioned to you, this can happen in two ways. One, practically they denounce Islam altogether. And two, for all practical purposes, internally, in their heart, in their heart of hearts, in their thoughts, they really don't submit to Allah. They don't really see the point of living by Allah's teachings. They don't see the point in that anymore. So they, for, that, for those practical purposes, they walked away from deen also, even if nobody else, human beings don't see it. We see a Muslim on the outside, we're supposed to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We're not supposed to judge what's in their heart, but Allah can. Allah sees what's inside. So whoever of you has walked away, or does so, then what does Allah say? Fasofa, then soon. And sofa is an, uh, the, the Arabic word that in, implies very soon. Allah, it, it won't take very long for Allah to take immediate steps. And what are those steps? يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ Allah will bring about a nation. Allah will bring about, Allah will bring forward a nation. It's very interesting. The first part was, even if one of you walks away, and then Allah says, Allah will bring a whole nation around. In other words, you start thinking you're special? You think Allah needs you? You think you're a contributor to Islam that nobody else can be? That you are irreplaceable? Allah Azza wa Jal essentially says, what, what to speak of you, I'll bring a nation instead of you. You're, you're not an asset. You're not, don't think of yourself as that, that high. Already we're being put in our place. 
And one of the central embedded teachings of this ayah is humility. That we understand our place. That in this deen, when we get the honor of saying La ilaha illallah, when we have the honor of saying Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then this is an honor and a gift given by Allah. And if you don't appreciate this gift, then who needs you? There's plenty of others that can appreciate it more than you and I.